Hi guys, this is Jordan with Motion Array. The last After Effects tutorial we did was huge and ambitious. It was a one hour, 15 minute long tutorial that was broken up into three parts. It's this video here, and if you wanna check it out, the link for it is in the description below. But because the last one was so huge, we decided to scale things back a little bit and do a tutorial that's a little bit more simple. Today, we're gonna check out how to make this scribble effect inside of After Effects. It's pretty simple to pull off, so let's jump into After Effects and take a look at how to get this effect. The first thing you want to do is create your text. Either select your text tool or use the shortcut key Control or Command T. Drag over the area where you want to create your text and type in what you want it to say. I'm just going to quickly size and center my text here. The next thing you're going to do is create a mask from your text. Thankfully, this is a really simple process. Just right click your text layer and select Create Masks from Text. This will take each of your individual letters in your text and create a specific mask for each one of them within this one layer. Next, you're going to add the effect that will pretty much do most of the legwork for you. It's called Scribble, and you can find it in your Effects tab. Either search for it under Generate, or type it into the search bar. Once you've found it, drag it onto a new mask layer. From here you should see just one letter pop up as being scribbled in. This is because right now by default the effect is set to generate for just the first mask. So go over to your scribble effect controls, and where it says mask you can see that it's set for just one letter, and then you can choose any of the individual letters from this drop down. If that's what you want then great, but chances are you want them all to have the effect. So under scribble it should be set for single mask, choose all masks instead. You can see that it already has the basics down for the effect but we can certainly finesse it from here to make it better. This is a matter of preference, but one of the things that I like to do to start with is take my composite settings here and change it. By default, it'll probably be set to on transparent, which will basically use the original text as a starting point, but it'll look messy. That can totally be the look that you're going for, but what I like to do personally is to make it look a little bit neater by setting the composite to reveal original image. What this does is allow for the scribble to be contained within the boundaries of the original text, but it can't go outside of that imaginary border. The end result is that you get a very messy scribble contained in a very neat border. Next, you can play around with a whole variety of different parameters to see what kind of looks it can give you, but we'll go over some key ones first. The fill type will distinguish how your scribble interacts with your text based on the edge you specify. Inside, center edge, inside edge, outside edge, left edge, right edge, they each give a different look and can each be what you're going for in a different situation. You can easily change the color of your scribble with this color swatch, but unfortunately you can't do this when your composite is set for reveal original image. When we try it now, it doesn't really do anything. But if we want to switch it back to on transparent, we can see the color change easily. So what do we do for our other option? Simply go to your effects and add a fill effect under the generate section. Now use this effect to generate the color of your scribble. From here on, some parameters are pretty straightforward. Opacity will change the transparency of your scribble. The angle will change the direction of each of the scribble lines that it's pointed towards. The stroke width controls how thick or thin each individual pen stroke looks. And all of those options, including color and fill type, can be keyframed to give you the ability to manipulate it over time. Next, your stroke options should have a variety of features which you can open up and play with. These are each pretty self-explanatory. Curviness controls how straight or curvy your scribble lines will look. A lower number will make it straight, and a higher number will make it more curvy. Increasing the curviness variation will simply randomize how straight or curvy each of the lines are, making things look a little bit more chaotic the more you raise it up. Changing the spacing will either increase or decrease the distance between each of the lines. You can spread them out a lot, or make them so close that it looks like the original text again. And spacing variation does exactly what you'd imagine. Finally, path overlap and path overlap variation work in the same ways of each of these other two parameters, but only for the amount that each stroke will interact and overlap with the others. Again, you can make it so that there's barely any lines at all, or that they're overlapping so much that you almost get the original text again. This last option can help give you text that appears normal, only with some interesting stroke lines. Next, the parameters start to get a little bit more complicated. You have a start and end feature, which allows you to control how the letters are revealed or hidden. If this box is checked, the reveal will happen either left to right or right to left, 
depending on whether you change the start or end parameter. If you uncheck fill path sequentially, each individual letter will act as its own unit, and the path of each letter will start and end in a similar way to which you would draw it. Next is wiggle type. You have three options. Static causes your scribble animation to not move at all. Jumpy gives it more of a stop motion look as it jumps from one frame to the next in the scribble animation. And Smooth will connect these animation frames so that each frame is connected to the next through motion. This gives more of the effect of a high frame rate. It all comes down to what you want and what you need for your project, so try them all out and see what you like better. Lastly, the two that we haven't covered are Wiggles Per Second and Random Seed. Wiggles Per Second will simply act similarly to the frame rate of your scribble animation. A lower number like 5 Wiggles Per Second will give you a very sporadic, slow, and stuttery animation while 30, for example, will give you a faster animation. 30 is our maximum number, because that's the frame rate that our composition is set for. You can't take this number higher than your frame rate. For me, I'm going to go with 12 wiggles per second to give it a bit more of that stop motion feel. And finally, Random Seed will simply allow you to cycle through your animation and choose a unique starting point through the animation. This primarily would be useful if you had an animation that has a lot of drastic changes and you want to control how your animation looks when you first see it. It does not in fact randomize the parameters of the animation itself, just how it looks to start with. So now with all that you should have the tools that you need to create your own scribble animation for your text. I hope that you guys found this video helpful. If you did, check out some of our other videos at motionarray.com. We've got tutorials on Premiere Pro, After Effects, and filmmaking in general. But that's it for me, thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you in the next video.